Today we're going to talk about classes, uh, derived classes with resources. Um, what I'm going to talk about may come completely obvious, like it's an obvious thing. It's not something that is, uh, like when I put, because in the other class when I said, one of the students said, so what, obviously, like, uh, so, <laughs> but we have to mention, so we know about rule of three. So when we create a class, we have rule of three, and at that rule of three, we say that if the class is holding any type of resources out of, outside of a scope, I need to have a copy constructor, copy assignment, and destructor created to make sure that the resources I saw that the scope is taken care of, right? Okay, now we are saying that if you have a, if you inherit that class into another class and your child class has resources of its own, therefore rule of three is applied, you have to make sure that you manually request for the rule of three of the parent to be called to. So when the copy constructor of the child is called, you have to say, hey, don't forget to first copy my parent's side. When the copy assignment is done, you have to say, hey, don't first forget to do the parent side of the copy, and then do this. That's all. And the destructor, we have to make sure it's virtual. So the virtual thing I told you, I told you at any moment of time, you create a class, you create a destructor, even if it doesn't have a destructor, put a destructor, empty destructor over there, and set it to, the, to virtual, just to be in the safe side. So that's all I'm saying. So that's what I'm going to and essentially demonstrate today. So there is not, it, it is an obvious thing that we need to know, okay? <clears throat> and for that example, I, um, I, 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 I came up with uh, uh, talking about, I came up with, uh, uh, I thought of uh, creating a class uh, called name. And say, let's say, let's create a class called name. <clears throat> a name uh, has a, a string value that could be dynamic. It's a good example. So the class name's job is to encapsulate a name, single name, Fred, Jack, Joe, Art, something, OK? So, uh, so we have that one. Then we're going to say a full name is a name who has a last name, OK? So essentially, I'm going to inherit a full name out of a name that it has a value, the value of the full name, so it has a last name, and also it inherits the first part of the name from the name. And therefore, the example goes through. Not the best example, but the simplest thing that I can come up with. OK? <clears throat> so we're going to create a class name. We have a class name. Pardon me? <laughs> what? <laughs> you sound like my, my daughter. <laughs> do that again. <laughs> do, do, do what again? I just wanted to create the whole module, so I didn't want to create individual thing. I said create a class. Oh, but when I do full names, you'll, you'll see again. So I'll do that again <laughs> when it's full name. You know, I, I get my daughter like, turn, 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 and put her down and say, do that again. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so, yeah, so that was the thing. Okay, so, so, but again, as you see, it's using its own stuff. I don't want pragma, pragma stuff over there, so I'm going to create my own things with the namespace and stuff. I just wanted the files to get created. And that's what I did. So this is essentially what I'm going to have over there at the top. And at the bottom, I'm going to uh, create the closing of the namespace. And this thing's going to be, so that's what I did. OK? So that's that. And for the name.cpp, include is already there. So all I need to do is to say namespace, stds. And I have my blank module. Now I'm going to do the module for the, for the full name, too. So here you go. So I right click on a thing on the name of the uh, place that I want to add the, the module to it. I'm going to say add. Uh, I'm going to say class. OK, and when it says class, the class name is full name. OK, let me make sure because it, it matches my cheat sheet. Yeah, 
full name. There you go. I just want to make sure that I can copy code from there. I don't have to type everything. So full name. And I'm going to say the base class for that one is name. OK? And it's inherited publicly. And it's not in line. Therefore, it creates the whole module. I'm going to click on OK. And ha. So it actually includes name. Does that. So that, so. But again, uh, I want to have my own stuff. So <clears throat> I modify it to what I want to create out of it. So uh, essentially, I am going to add these things to it. So <clears throat> it, it is STDS. And I'm going to close this one. And uh, make sure that I have end if at the end. So that's my full name. And the full names CPP file is going to be namespace SCDS. So that's the, the structure of, my, uh, of what I want to talk about today. Okay, I create a, and another thing that is cool for you to to work with this resource file. So you go to resource files, you go add, new item. And in the new item, you can always select utility. Class diagram is the one. And click on add. It, clear, it adds a class diagram. And you can simply drag and drop the, uh, the header files in there. And it uh, brings up the class. But uh, right now, I think because uh, I didn't put anything in it, it doesn't seem interesting for it. But let me just, uh, let me create it and I'll show it to you. So it actually creates a class diagram of the whole thing for you. We'll talk about that later. Don't save. OK. So for the class, uh, for the header file, again, uh, for, uh, sorry, for the, for the class name, why the STDS is, I think this is better now, right? Yeah. So I'm going to have a character, a pointer, and value. And that's going to be the, uh, the content of the name. And I'll do the usual suspects for it. So uh, er everything that I'm going to have, all the things that I'm going to have for it would be this. So I have a, a constructor that acts like a default constructor, too. So if I don't pass anything, it puts null PTR over there. Um, um, yeah, no. Hmm, I could have done something better. Anyways, um, and then uh, it has a copy constructor, copy assignment, and virtual destructor. So rule of three is applied for this. Very good. Okay. Obviously, after doing all this, I want to be able to display it. Again, the display that I'm doing is standard. So what I'm doing here is exactly what you're doing in your project, which is essentially, and I told you at the top of the thing, any time I tell you anything reads and writes, the signature is returning O stream, receiving O stream set to STDL. OK? So any function that writes is like that, and any function that reads is like that. Display usually is constant. It doesn't change anything. and. Read is not constant, and it's because uh, it's modifying the thing. And then overloading the extraction, uh, insertion, and extraction operations are again standard. Okay, nothing extraordinary needs to be done. What are you talking about? We're good. Okay. So answering to your question. What if full name wants to access the name? It's private. It can't. Yeah, you, the name wants to do something with that. It wants to access it, read it, print it, do something with it, right? So I can actually do something like this, right? The exact same reason that you cannot access your dad's bank account. Part of the family, right? <laughs> <laughs> so it's it, it, inheritance in object orientation. Remember, guys, every, this is very important. In object orientation, it's all about privacy and organization. It's the only thing that's about which means nothing can access anything 
that is not directly related to it. Okay? Especially when you are doing inheritance, you want the base class to be self-contained and know how it deals with its property so the child is not bothered with it. Okay? Okay. Uh, when, when the class is owned by another class, you, are, you, have, you have seen it in menu. Menu item, constructor is, is private, correct? Remember? Forgot already? Not workshops, but uh, MS1. <laughs> is it MS1? Yeah. So the, in MS1, <laughs> who did it for you? <laughs> So, so MS1, like for milestone one, we have a menu, and menu has a menu item. The menu item inside, the menu item is a class that is fully private. The constructors are private. The two? It's MS2, okay. So, one, what was one then? So, it's one, not two. It's MS1. Yeah, yeah, you use the menu in there, but, yeah, but you implement the menu in one, yeah. So, so what menu actually, what, what menu have, so menu item is a fully private class that has a friend called menu. Therefore, all the properties of menu item is accessible to menu. So it, it is owned by menu, therefore, that makes sense. Because you don't want anybody to, you cannot have a menu item in the middle of anything. It doesn't make sense. No, you inherit a, a, a class with a private constructor. So, what did you say? No, it won't be bad because, see, when you are inheriting from menu, menu is already taking of menu item. It doesn't matter. You don't need to worry about it. How can I explain it to it? Explain this to you. You buy a car, it has an engine. How many times you actually looked at the engine to see how it works? And it's fully private. Fully private. No access to it. But you get a car and you are using that engine perfectly. You can inherit it as much as you want because the car knows how to handle the engine the, inher the inherited things from the vehicle don't, don't matter <sighs> object orientation like again when it comes to object orientation C++ only becomes a tool the most important thing is to understand how to design in an object oriented way and object orientation is not only in programming you can do an object oriented uh, I don't know, building schematic design, if you want to. And you are. Like, you're, when you're actually doing a thing, what do you do? You just drag and drop a kitchen sink, drag, and you do that, right? When you're designing. How does it work? So, you, you, everything is an object. You just drop the object. So, so the, the object orientation is everywhere. It's not only in program. Anywhere. <clears throat> okay. So now that we have this, we have to implement all these things one by one. Um, uh, for the name.cpp, uh, returning, accessing the M value by children is only through the name value function. So the name value function returns a constant pointer of name, so the children can only see what the name is, they cannot change it. Okay? This is a protected member. Instance of name? Yes. Name is in, so protected from, it's protected from outsiders, not from itself or children. For the class itself? Public. Okay. Uh, this, first of all, there is no private or public or something for the class itself. A class has access to all its properties. I can put my finger in my ear if I want to. 
because it's my ear. I can do whatever I want with it. So it's all mine. I have access to all my body parts. Okay? That's what an object is. Each object has access to everything that it has. Okay? But when I'm shaking hand, then I'm, my hand is protected with you, which means we shake hands, we say hello. Now we, so that is okay. So giving access to a piece, which means shaking hand method, gives indirect access of my hand to you. You cannot use my hand to slap me in the face. That's not going to work. You can only shake hands with me. You have protect that access to me. If, but that's not protect. This is, not, this is public and private. This has nothing to do with protected. This is public and private. My daughter, if she puts her hand in my pocket, I'm going to say, what you're doing? Come on, like the laugh and stuff. You put your hand in my pocket and get a fist, right? That's, that's protected, which means my children, has, they have partial access to me. Not everything she cannot, I don't know, put his hand in my mouth. I don't want to put her hand in my mouth. I'm not going to allow that. That's private. Okay? But my pocket, she can access. So this is for that. It's for children. So protected is for children of name, which is full name. It's public for full name. Full name is a child. <laughs> I got confused, yeah. But it's private for main. So anyone outside of name cannot access it. Only children have access to pro protected properties. Salut. Not even name? Hmm? Name is itself. Name is the owner. It has access to everything. Protected, public, schmoplic, everything. Anyways, so how to create the name? Uh, for, because I wanted to make it easy, I'm not going to create a, I'm not going to create a, a special invalid empty space. Let me just bring that utilities here. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to create any, I'm not going to, with, with the constructor, I'm not going to create any special case for an empty, empty state, which means if they provide null for me, I'm going to allocate an empty uh, string. So I'm never going to have, I'm never going to have a null pointer in my name. Again, as I gave the example in the other class, when I say, when I, when I make it like this, there is always a coffee cup on the table. Now, the coffee cup could be empty or it could have coffee, but it's always a coffee cup on the table. It's impossible for the table not to have anything on it. Same thing over here. I always have a name in here. Now, that name could be empty, which means one character and that character is null. Okay? Or it can have something in it. So that's my empty state. So I don't have to worry about anything. When I'm printing, I don't need to check to see if it's not. I'm going to print. If it's empty, nothing's going to get printed. Easy breezy. Okay? Just to make my life easier. And what I'll copy is doing, it's not uh, something like algebra. It's, it's allocating copy and utils. Because I was lazy, I, do, I didn't want to keep writing that thing over and over and over. So I wrote an allocate and copy in here. What allocate and copy does is... It gets a string, it creates a pointer, it checks to see if it's null or not. If it's null, it doesn't do anything. If it's not null, it's going to allocate enough memory for it, copy the value in it, and return it out. So anytime I want to allocate memory for a string, I use allocate and copy. I pass the value to it. What it returns to me is a newly allocated memory containing a copy of what I have over there. It literally allocates and copies. Whoever is using it. Who's using it? Name. So name has to delete it. When, when you are creating this function, supposedly when you are actually creating it, like if I was a good boy, this is what I would have done. Why didn't, oh, there you go. Summary, I would have actually explained over here. I'll copy, uh, allocates memory. If I can type it, receives... Uh, receives, uh, seriously, I need to learn English, receives 
uh, receives a, a string, a C string, and returns a dynamic copy of it. Okay, receives as a string and returns a dynamic copy of it. As simple as that. Parameters, what is that? It's a constant character pointer. It returns a character pointer. Okay, so I should do something like that. So when somebody actually hovers over our copy, it's going to show, show that information. Okay? You know what is this thing called? Metadata. It's, uh, it's data about data. <laughs> it's information about data. So, so yeah, so I don't, let's see, if, let's see if it actually works now. So I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to bring it over here. There you go. It doesn't show anything. I thought it's going to actually show it. It's supposed to. I don't know why it's not. Seriously, it's not showing. Really? Embarrassing. Anyways, now what is C logs? When you actually do IO stream, it's not only C out that is instantiated. Three objects are instantiated. C out, C log, and C error. C E R R. These are three objects. Their jobs are equally the same. Printing on a terminal, on the screen. Okay? But if C log goes in a bad state, you know it's shy. It's not going to do anything anymore. It just becomes quiet until you clear it, right? If that's the case, you can print your messages on C error. That's why it's a good idea to do your debugging statements on C log. So if your C out becomes disabled, it goes like, like something bad happens and it goes in a failed state, you still see the logs being printed, OK? That was just an example to show you what it means, and, and, and I'm going to bring it up over here. So it will not do anything in here. We are not in that level. It's just. Uh, um, an example. So if one day you are doing something with C out and C out fails, I say, how am I supposed to print something now that C out has failed? That's your answer. And if it's, uh, it, that's for log. And if what you want to actually show is an error message, then print it on C error. Okay? Okay, so that's my constructor. Uh, now, for, a, for copy assignment, for copy assignment, what I'm doing is this. For copy assignment, I do, the, again, the usual thing. What I'm doing, I'm saying, uh, uh, yeah, operator equal to M value, so yeah. So I'm going to fix that debug statement right now. So operator equal receives a reference of another thing. So this is standard. It receives a reference, constant reference of its own type and receives a reference of its own type. What it does, it checks to make sure that self-assignment is not happening. So it checks the address of the current objects and the address of what it's supposed to copy. Make sure they are not the same. If they are not the same, the current data is wiped out. And then the new dat data is allocated and copied. OK? So that's standard. And then the reference of the current object is returned. The log over here is for me to see when it's getting executed. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say operator equal. I'm going to say overwrites. Overwrites. I'm going to say m value over here. OK? And then in here, I'm going to say, if SDDS, so in here, I'm going to remove the end L over here, and I'm going to say by this. So what happens if M value, if M value is null, it's going to print nothing, OK? If it is not null, it's going to actually show the value. So that's what it does. It says overwrites this value, which means it shows what is the current value of the object. Then deletes and sets it and says by, it overwrites that value by 
Now the value is overwritten. It's either nothing or it's empty or whatever it is, it's going to show. So that becomes the log for this. And I can turn off this log, but this debugging with STDS debug on and off. Okay? Again, this type of debug statements, this is not good because each one of it is an if statement and which it slows down your program. The best type of debugging statements are with preprocessor directives, which is if defined and not defined. So you have to create a defined statement for, for debug, and in here say, if defined, debug, you write the C log in it, end if. So when you remove the define of debug, all those if defines becomes disabled, and it doesn't even compile the debugging commands. So it, it, it's much better. You're looking at the side left top, which is no, right top, that means you're accessing some place and say, what the heck is talking about? We'll talk about that. I'll give you an example on that later in a semester so you know exactly what to do. That's the best way. <clears throat> how does, how does preprocessor directives work? How does uh, safeguards work for the compiler, for the header file? You define something. You check to see if it's defined or not. If it's defined, it will compile the header file. If it's not, it won't, right? You can do the exact same thing with every single error message. But instead of, so you create something like, you create something like in your header file, you create a header file called debug, and in that header file, you put define, underline, underline, SDDS, underline, debug, right? Something like that. And any place you want to do any debugging statements, you're going to say if defined that debug thingy, then you put an end if right after it. So that single line or lines for debugging will get compiled or not get compiled based on the defined statement you have in debug file. That is a very good way of doing debugging because when you take that define out, then those things will be completely excluded from your code and will not slow down your code. For now, for this thing to happen, two if statements are actually getting executed, which is not good. It's not run. When you turn on the debug code, you have to recompile everything. So when it recompiles, it brings all the debugging statements in your code. When you're done, program works perfect. Now you want to give it to the client. You take that debugging out, and you recompile. Therefore, all those debugging statements will be excluded from your program. Yes, so that's that. So that's, that's the assignment operator. And usually when you do a copy constructor, the copy constructor is using assignment operator to, to do the copying. So you simply say, uh, so this does actually, this is me being lazy or any programmer being lazy because lots of extra stuff is happening over here that you know, do not need to do it in a, in a constructor. For example, you don't need to do a self-check. A constructor is, is invoked when an, a new object is being created. Therefore, it is impossible for CP and the current object to be the same. That is not needed. Second, a delete is happening over here. You don't need to delete anything because this is a new object. Because of that fact, running this thing, although calling this, although it's a beautiful thing in test and stuff like that because you're done with it in two seconds, you don't have to write the whole thing. Um, so I, I loved an answer that one of my students gave, and I have to give the person the mark. So I actually create, I said, write the copy constructor, assuming everything else is, is uh, implemented, OK? And the guy just did this, one line. And I couldn't say no. It was perfect, right? Because I said, I made the mistake, and I said, everything else is implemented, which means <laughs> assignment operator is implemented. So if it is implemented, why do I bother? But the most important thing you need to do is that to understand that an assignment operator gets executed when an object already exists. But a constructor happens when an object is just born. So this operator equal may do stuff that causes uh, crash, especially delete. Because of that, it's an amazing practice to always set your property to null. 
to its default state. Now, any type of constructor I put over here, it's going to have a value of uh, null in, uh, in, in value. If delete goes on null, nothing happens. Okay, and please, in your test and stuff, don't write if pointer, then delete. That's a redundant thing. I, I see many of you do it. In tests, you write if you want to delete something, first you check to see if it's null or not, then you delete it. If it's null, delete won't do anything, so don't bother. Okay, just delete. Life is good, like that. Quicker, easier. All right, and the destructor is easy breezy too, so we have no problem with that. So now, having this here is safe because operator equal when it actually wants to delete it because it has a, a blank, uh, a, a null pointer over there, nothing's going to go wrong with it. And obviously, the destructor's job is just to delete the value. Again, I don't care if it's null or not, I delete it. If, if it is null, nothing's going to happen, although my logic dictates that a destructor will never have an M value that is null. That's, that's what the destructor dictates, but we'll do it anyway. We'll, we'll talk about it anyway. Displaying the value simple. I just display the value, and I do not need to put anything in it because I don't have a My safe empty state is an empty C string. It's not null. I don't need to check it. I just print it. If there is nothing there, nothing's going to get printed. It's going to print an empty C string. And at the end, finally, when I'm actually reading, OK, I have to make sure first the thing is wiped out. I don't have anything in the value. Then I'm getting a dynamic C string ISDR. This is in utils, OK? So I've done this in utils using the class string of C++. So what I did, there is, there is a, an overwrite, I cannot say overload. There is a function with the same name as the get line of C in, iStream. iStream has a function called get line, right? There is a standalone function called get line too. It's a helper function that helps the C++ string object and it's its first argument. So because string handles the memory automatically, using get line, you don't need to mention how many characters. It automatically adds to its size as you get it. So you don't have, the user can enter five characters or five million. String will adjust itself when it's actually reading. That is done this way. And you have it in the notes too. So it's right over here. I can find it. Seriously? There you go. Get dynamic string. You see that? Okay. So I'm creating a C string pointer that I'm supposed to return after dynamic memory allocation. I ask for an object of string of C of C++. Then I call the helper function for get line. I'm saying from iStream, so as you see, it doesn't belong to iStream. It receives iStream as an argument. From iStream, read the string up to backslash n. Length is not important. Whatever the length is, it adjusts itself. Then after that, I'm going to say if it didn't fail, which means I don't know how it's going to fail, but for any reason, if it, didn't fa if it, if it did not fail, Allocate and copy the C string content of the string. So C underline string returns the C string content of the string object. And I say copy and allocate, allocate and copy for that one in the C string and return it. That's it. Okay. And one of the students asked, what if I didn't want to use the, the, the string? And I said, I did that example a long time ago. Somebody asked in class, and I had time, so I actually did it in class in front of them. I searched it, and I found it. Okay? That's the solution for that. This is without the use of, C, without the use of string. Okay? 
How does it work? It works as follows. So, and, I, and I'm putting it over there on purpose. I know it has nothing to do with classes, with resources that we are, uh, 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 what should we call it? The uh, derived classes with resources, but it's a good thing to know. So, and, I, and you are at the stage that you can actually go home and walk through this and see how it works. It's lots of dynamic memory allocation and, and think I'm going to explain to you exactly how it works. So this is how it works. Don't look at the code. This is what you need to see. So where are, where are, where are my boundaries? OK, so this is one side. And, and what am I? Uh, oh, this is, so this side is good. OK, good. So OK, so to read, this is what I do. First, I get a dynamic piece of memory, whatever the size is. So I create a, what did I name it? Oh, I forget it. So I get I, I, something that I want to receive. So that's the string that I want to read. It's a pointer, OK? I do a dynamic memory allocation, let's say, for a chunk. Let's say this chunk is four characters, OK? So let's say I want to get, that's not four. Usually it's like 128, 256, depending on what you want. And I say my allocation unit, allocation, ALU, that's wrong because it means something, allocation unit, OK? Allocation unit is four. So first, I do four bytes in here, OK? Then I will tell to get line of C in to read four bytes from the screen. OK? I ask the C in to not to read four bytes. To read, yeah, read four bytes from screen. Read up to four, which means it reads to three and put a zero at the end if it needs. OK? So I say, what I say is this. I say C in. I do something like C in dot get line, and uh, what do you do for get line? Uh, get line, I put uh, the, the string, and I say over here four, and backslash in, right? Something like this. So this will read up to four characters. The thing with get line is that if get line, if get line fail, if get line reaches to four before backslash in, it fails the CN. But it doesn't fail the reading. It actually fills the four characters with the stuff in a keyboard. So let's say the person on the keyboard enters this. Enters this, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, and hits enter, OK? So, what get line does, gets, get line gets these three, so it makes it A, B, C, and, uh, and D, I think. I think it puts D over here and fails, okay? I don't remember exactly, but, but we'll see. So it puts it like that. It fails. As soon as I see it failed, what I do using a temporary pointer, I add another four bytes to it. So I say I had four. I add four more, OK? So now my size becomes eight, correct? In a loop, I add the allocation unit to this one. Oh, actually, I don't add that allocation unit to this one. I copy everything from here to here, so it goes A, B, C, D, OK? And I run this again because I added four. But instead of SDR, I put, I update the SDR to point to here now before deleting it. Okay, so I delete that and I say SDR point to here. And I run that again in the loop. Now it reads E, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and it fails again. It fails again. I again reallocate. And this time it becomes 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. A, B, C, D. E, F, G, H will go over here, and I execute that line again. And this time, SDR is pointing to here. So it reads I, 
J and it hits the backslash N. It makes it null terminated and successfully ends it. Now I know my temp over here has the value I wanted, right? I see what is the size. I allocate exactly that much memory for this, resize this one and delete the old one and return that one. So at the end, I readjust my size and I return it. And that's the algorithm that it's using over there. So if you look at this, it's the exact same thing over here. Of course, it shows a prompt too. If you want to show a prompt at the beginning, it does it too. So it's CSDR new allocation unit, as you see. And I'm saying what I'm going to return is the CSDR. So that's what I'm going to return at the end. Now I'm going to say my size is the allocation unit. My size is the allocation unit. Start reading into SDR up to allocation unit. Then if C in fails, I add the allocation unit to the size. I copy everything from what I had to do to, re to return to temp. I delete to return. I update to return to be the new one. Then I make the C string to point to the end of the data, as you see. Size minus null index, yada, yada, yada. OK? Then I'm going to say size plus equal allocation unit. Clear. Go read again. It keeps doing that until it reads everything perfectly. Then it comes down over here. And when it comes down over here, what does it do? So what does it do over here? Oh, that's the end of while loop. Oh, and so it done, we'll finish, we'll come over here. Here it resizes it. It says, see how many, how, how many characters I have to return. Allocate that much, copy that one, delete to return, update to return, and return it. So therefore, it adjusts itself. So this does that thingy without anything, with our knowledge of, uh, and, it's, and it's an awful way to write, write it, because I just did it in class. I don't know, it might be, like some calculations errors that I kind of fixed somehow. So go through it if you can make it better. Send me the better version of it, and I'll give you some modus marks. OK? But I'm, I'm bribing you to go and, and, and walk through that thing. OK? So it's a good thing. You can use it. Anyway, so that's that. So now my name is written now completely, is it? Oh, no, I don't have the. The read is done. I didn't do the, uh, the insertion and extraction operator overloads, again, are standard. And it's something, again, you should be able to do it with your eyes closed. Seriously. Like, they're all the same always. Right? You do O stream operator left shift O stream OSDR const name. Return the display of the name. And return the exact same thing for it. And that is actually your name. So what the full name is doing right now and why we are, we are that, that the purpose of our session today is that our uh, name over here, our full name over here has a character pointer to add a last name, to add a last name to the name. So full name is a name with a last name, okay? And it has a public thingy. Obviously, the constructor of full name, obviously, the constructor of full name accepts the first name and the last name. And I make them both null, just uh, in case for, 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 for default purposes. Uh, I follow the rule of three. I do all the, and I overwrite all the virtual functions. So those are no-brainer. We know exactly how they are. We did that in Animal 50 times. So a constructor, rule of three, copy constructor, copy assignment, and virtual destructor, and the two virtual display and read. I do not need to overload the extraction and insertion over operator overload anymore because its mother has it. Name has it. Because name has it, you can always pass a full name as a name. And because display and read are virtual, always the latest version is called anyway. Therefore, I don't need to rewrite those things. That's saving. That's true, true polymorphism. This is true polymorphism. Okay? It's not like overloading that was fake. This is true. This is real. Okay? 
And now that's done. So now how do we implement this? So you need to, first of all, to do the constructor over here, I need, uh, I need utils and I need uh, IO stream. So uh, and another thing, system header files always come before custom header files, always. Okay, uh, what do I write here? Uh, namespace, okay, yeah. Using namespace std, okay. So that's that there, I have it. Now, now it's actually doing it. It says full name, first and last. It asks the compiler, we've done this already in animal. it says build the name with the first name. We know that, right? Now, classes with resources tells you to make sure to do the exact same thing with your copy constructor. So what happens is that now you can do it in many different ways. I'm going to show it to you one by one, and I'm going to tell you uh, uh, what is the standard way and why they're all possible. So if I'm doing a copy constructor, we know what the syntax of the copy constructor is. I pass the full name as a whole object to the copy constructor of name. That's not going to cause any problem. Why? Because full name is a name. It can be passed as a reference of a name. Therefore, when name is doing the copy operation on full name, it will do it only on its name part. And therefore, the name part will be copied. So you can easily pass the object that you are copying, that is a derived object, to the copy constructor of the parent. And because copy constructor of a parent doesn't know the difference, it just knows a name is coming. Yes, I have all the properties of the name. I'm going to copy that. And only copies that part into the name part of the new full name. All that remains for you is to copy the rest, which is last name becomes out of copy of the last name that I'm receiving from FN, and I'm going to say this. So it, it allocates and copies the, uh, the last name, and it's done. And because I was careful in my full name in here, and I made it null, I don't need to worry about how allocation and copy is working. Is it deleting or not deleting? I don't care. OK? If it deletes because it's null, it's null I don't mind. And it does the allocation and copy, and we are done. So that's the copy constructor, OK? And copy assignment. Copy assignment is exactly the same thing. So all you need to do is to take care of the mother first and then go to the child. So with the assignment operator over here, what I'm doing, I've, I do the basic things. If my address is not equal to the address of the thing, do the copying, right? Then I'm going to say, copy, the assign the name part. So I explicitly call the assignment operator of the name. Therefore, assignment operator of the name will assign the name part of the new object, and then I take care of the rest. Delete the last name, allocate and copy and last name, and you're done. OK? Are we good? So there is only one thing, allocate and see, that's the thing, the reusing code, you need to really know how your code works. Allocate and copy, I need to do if it, if it deletes. No, it doesn't delete the thing, so this is good. So if allocate and copy deleted, then I had to, if allocate copy deleted the, the one that it overrides, oh no, it actually returns. No, nah, forget it completely, I made a mistake. It was uh, worries that, that I did not actually need to I, I even think about. Anyway, so yeah, so it deletes the last name and does that, OK? So that's the, the assignment operator and the rest of the stuff. The, it, it, it all depends on your business logic. Oh, the, the destructor, you don't need to do anything about. Destructor is something that you have no, nothing to worry about. The only thing that you need to worry about is the property of the child 
to get deleted. Because the destructor was virtual, automatically everything's going to get called in reverse order. If you didn't make it virtual, you were in trouble. But if you make it virtual, then you don't need to. In, in destructor, unlike copy assignment and, and copy constructor, uh, you don't need to uh, do anything to the child's stuff. It will be done automatically. OK? And again, for the display and for uh, read, that's the exact same thing that you, you do. So you call, you override, you override R-I-D-E. You override the display of the parent and make sure you called what you overrode, overrode at, right at the beginning. So it displays the, the parent, then it displays itself. What I'm saying over here, hey, Last name, only do it if the last name actually had something. If I have to do check something, because if the last name is blank, then it's going to put a space and a blank, which is not, doesn't make sense. It's going to have an extra space at the name. I don't want that. I'm saying only if I have something in last name, on the O stream, print the space and the last name. So it actually put first name, space, last name, and displays it. And for the read, the same thing. I'm going to say first name. And I'm going to read last name. I'm going to delete the name and do the dynamic reading for the string over here and return it. And voila. So that's derived classes with the resources. That was when I actually got the thing. So what? Obviously, we are, this, is, this is what it is. You have to. It's, it's only logical that when you are copying a child, you take care of the parent part. Nothing is automatic in C++. Nothing is automatic. That having said, having said that, another thing that I wanted to mention um, is that now you're at the stage that when you're doing dynamic memory allocation, setting pointers to null at every single place that you're doing deleting is, shows that you're a rookie. So if you are writing a code and you want to give it to a, uh, the company, say, this is the code that I have written, see if you want to hire me or not. If you see you do this in the destructor, They know you have no idea what, what you're doing. You're just, you're just somebody told you when you delete, you make it no. OK? So when do you make it no? When you're in doubt if that pointer is going to get reused. That's the rule. If you're in doubt that if the pointer is the pointer going to get reused, then you make it no. For example, if I did not know, so this is, why don't I do it in a destructor? For the same reason you don't wash the Tim Hortons coffee cup before you throw it away. It's a disposable thing. It's done. You don't need it. You want to throw it away. You don't want to wash it. If you want to reuse it, if you want to reuse the pointer, you make it null. Otherwise, you don't. So from what I just said, if I do not, for example, if I let me go to name. Name is better. So here I don't do anything. In here. Now, it's, see, this is being overwritten. So it uh, overwritten. So I have a pointer, and it's being overwritten right away. So making it null over here makes absolutely no sense. You're just writing something over it. Sadly, I don't have any place that I, can, I need to put a null afterwards. Or I can put an all afterwards that makes sense. So I don't have anything in here to give you an example for it. But anyways, you know what I mean. When you look at the pointer, and after a pointer, you have it something that is called, and you have no idea what's going to happen to the pointer, then definitely make it no. OK? So if you are in doubt what's going to happen later to this pointer, that's no. If for sure you know what's going to happen on it, never make it a no. OK? Because you want to be known as a person who knows what the code is doing, OK? Remember, making a pointer now is washing a disposable cup if you are not, if you are throwing it away, OK? So if, that, if you're not using it, careful, OK? But if you are using a pointer over and over and over, then every single time you delete it, you make it now. That's that one. What else? Destructor, destructor. Oh! Different types of doing 
copy constructor. So this is how I did the copy constructor. But I could do it like this too. Take a look. So, see what I'm doing? I'm saying full name, copy constructor. I'm calling the regular constructor of name, passing the name value of first name. That'll work too. Crazy, but it works. So sometimes you have ways, different ways of doing it. As you see over here, there is nothing wrong with it. It builds the, so you, you don't have to call the copy constructor. It just makes sense. It's easier because if you know it's doing the copy, it's fine. But if you write, call the regular constructor, it still works. It still copies the name and then does the other one. Not only that. That's one, that's one. Yeah, and this one. Another way of doing it, that you did it in the other one too. So I'm going to comment this one to do a uh, full name, full name, const, full name, reference fn. So if I do this and I don't mention what's going to get called, if I just do this, what's going to get called for the parent? The default constructor. And if you recall, default constructor made it an, an empty string, correct? So all I need to do over here is do right? What does this do? Calls the operator equal. What does operator equal do? Sets the name first. Again. It doesn't matter how, it is important to take care of the parent copying when the child is being copied. That's all. Are we good? That's the end of the lecture for today. Copy constructor. You use what you said. So let me make the last one over here. Make the best one uncommented. So this is the one that you have. This is the best one. Yeah, because why? Because it's a copy constructor. You're, you, you're using the same logic for this one. They are both copy constructors. Huh? The, the problem is that your assignment operator may have a different logic. But a copy constructor's job is to always copy the object. So it's always safe without looking at the code of the parent to just call the copy constructor and be done with it. It's the safest one. Now, I wouldn't call it the best. It's the safest. The safest one. Any questions? Any questions one? Any questions two? All right. <laughs>